name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My adorable Jesus, may our feet journey together. May our hands gather in unity. May our hearts beat in unison. May our souls be in harmony. May our thoughts be as one. May our ears listen to the silence together. May our glances profoundly penetrate each other. May our lips pray together to gain mercy from the Eternal Father. Amen. Sing so good, did you? <laughs> I know it's Lent, but this is a parish mission, so I have special faculties for a parish mission. I'm going to say, Alleluia. Remember, Augustine said, we're an Easter people, and Alleluia is our song. Amen? Amen. So we should be happy um, every day of our lives because we're heaven-bound. We're heaven-bound. That's our destiny. It's our origin and our destiny. And God wants you and me there more than we want to go there. Isn't that funny? He wants us more than we want him. Isn't that crazy? We are heaven-bound. There was a rap song. I'm not a good rapper, but I remember the rapper that said, <laughs> heaven-bound. We need to be heaven bound. So you try it right now, all right? Say this after me. Say, <laughs> heaven bound. I dub you official Christian rappers. <laughs> so we're on our way to heaven, and we have the bread of heaven. Amen? Amen. And so I, the Lord told me to share with you another story about the Eucharist, a miracle story. And gosh, just seeing it, I start to get the Holy Spirit tingles just talking about it. I need to share with you something about this precious gift we have because when the victory comes, the whole world will be not only Catholic, but Eucharistic. The whole world will be Eucharistic. And what breaks my heart as a priest is that we have been ignoring the greatness of God in the sacrament, including many clergy. We don't seem to understand what's really at stake here. And I think God the Father in his justice is about to send thunderbolts across the world. I do. A great, a great shakeup is coming. And after that shakeup, those who land on their feet, sorry, those who pray the rosary, those who land on their feet will become true Catholics, men and women who are saintly in love with God. And the Lord said new miracles will occur, some we've never even heard of before, new miracles. And even teenagers will have miracles and work miracles in the age that is coming. Amen? Something fabulous is coming, beloved. I'm just getting that anointing all over me. And the Lord says, to share that with you, these are, these are true prophecies. Not only have I heard them, but they come from the saints as well. Canonized saints have said these things. If you want a good book about some of these things, uh, Christine Watkins' book, The Warning, I would recommend to you. The Warning by Christine. It just came out, a revised edition. And uh, Professor Daniel O'Connor, a wonderful professor, he has a beautiful book, too, about the divine will. And his book's called The Crown of Sanctity. It's really worth reading with all the prophecies there. So before I continue with this story, we're going to pray the unity prayer. This is an end times gift to the Catholic Church, to the whole world. And you should have this. It's also, I believe, on your printout. So if you don't have the holy card, I know we passed it out yesterday, but if you don't have the holy card, don't despair. It should be on your handout as well. So it's halfway down your paper handout to the same prayer. And I want to recommend to you, Father Ed and I spoke about this and the team earlier, that you take a picture on your cell phone of this prayer. Take a picture. I want to do something special here. Uh, this prayer, I witnessed to this earlier in the week. It's simply nothing less than miraculous, this prayer. I use it as an exorcist, and now all the exorcists of the world are starting to use this prayer because of what happened. But it's not only for us, it's for every Catholic, for every baptized person. It literally blinds and paralyzes every single demon in the area. Amen? Amen. And the Lord is so good because it looks like hell has been opened. And like all the demons are flying around right now, and this will protect you and your family when you say this prayer daily. And I always recommend to say it twice to pray for your city. 
See, the church teaches us, it's in the Summa Theologia of Thomas Aquinas, that part of piety is loving your homeland. We should never tear down our country, amen? amen. That's actually evil. If you're from Hungary, you love and support Hungary. If you're from Poland, you love and support Poland. If you're from Nigeria, you love and support Nigeria. And if you're from this country, you love and support this country. Amen? Amen. Oh, well, it's not perfect. Well, tell me, are you perfect? There's nothing perfect on the earth. Amen? That's the whole idea. Because she's not perfect, you protect her. Amen? Amen. And if your country has a flaw, maybe you were born to heal the flaw. Maybe that's why you're here, not to complain about it, but to heal it. Amen. Amen. So all this nonsense, and even in our universities, our kids are being taught, it's all an error, it's sinful, and it's evil. Amen? Amen. We should love this country and support this country. If you see a flaw, you work on it to heal it. Amen? Amen. You don't complain about it and burn down buildings because of it. You don't do that. You get down on your knees and you pray for your country. Amen? Amen. This is called piety. Of course it's from God. He didn't put us here to hurt one another. He put us here to heal one another. Amen? Amen. So this holy prayer we're going to do right now, we're going to do it twice. The second time will be for Seattle. Oh, I just got the anointing. Because we want to blind any demonic spirits over Seattle. Uh, the Lord says, I can tell you this. The Lord showed me there's a stronghold in every state or city. There's like a leading demon in every state or city. So as I was praying for Seattle today, the Lord showed it to me. The more time you spend in prayer, not just priests, you too, the more time we spend in prayer, the more that revelation will come to you from the Holy Spirit. It's really more a question of time. As the bumper sticker says, just do it. Just pray, and the revelation will come. Amen? Amen? But we need more than three minutes a day. Three minutes is fine if you're two and a half years old. <laughs> it's fine. But for every adult, like everyone 18 years of age or over, one year is the bare, excuse me, one hour a day is the bare minimum. <laughs> one hour a day. Two hours a day is better today. We're in the battle of our life. This is the battle. Isn't it fun? Yes. I love it. I don't want to be a wussy. I'm in a battle. How about you? I, I, I like the battle, but I want to win. Amen? Amen? And so an hour a day really isn't enough anymore. That was good when Leave it to Beaver was popular. Right? That was good back then. Now we need two hours a day minimum. Amen? I sometimes tell people that it's just like your rosaries. One used to be enough, right, when Leave it to Beaver, the Beverly Hillbillies was on. But now we have Harry Potter and God knows things even worse than that now. We need two, three, and four rosaries a day. 